Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel, Bookalicious. I'm finally able to record part three of my reading recap for the first half of 2024. It's been a busy week, but I'm excited to do this recap, even though I've already talked about these books in some of my reading wrap ups for the months of May and June. But I still want to go over these books again and just give my ratings again and chat more about these books. But this will hopefully hopefully be not as long as part one and part two since I've already talked about these books on my channel but it's going to be fun to go over them all again and I'm very excited to film this video so let's get right into it. Okay so we're going to be talking about all the books I read in May. So the first book that I read in May was Beach Read by Miss Emily Henry who is just killing it right now. All of her books, I believe, are becoming movies. I think the casting for the couple for People We Meet on Vacation just came out. Like she is, ha she has so much success right now and I'm so happy for her. Um, I do not have the best track record with Emily Henry books. Let me explain. I started Beatreed in 2022 when I was like, I don't know how old I was. I was like 17, I think, at the time. And I don't think I was like ready to fully understand like the type of romance that Beach Read is because it's much more serious than just a fluffy, lighthearted rom-com. And it was not what I expected. And it is marketed as enemies to lovers, not by Emily, but by some people who do book recommendations. They're like, this is enemies to lovers. And I am obsessed with enemies to lovers. That's my thing. I love enemies to lovers. But I think in 2022, if I would have known that it wasn't that trope, I would have had a better time with it. So in 2022, I was so against this book. I was like, I'm never going to read it again. I DNF'd it at like 60% 60, 60 and I was just like, I'm done. And then I decided to give Emily Henry another chance because FOMO. I had major FOMO because everybody just loves this book. All of the wonderful booktubers like Hayley Pham and Sarah Caroli, Destiny Sidwell, like Beach Read is like one of their favorite books ever. And so I wanted to just give it another try and see if I would enjoy it more now. And I totally enjoyed it so much more. I gave it four stars and it was so good and so emotional and I really just loved the characters. I appreciated the writing style this time around and I'm very happy that I gave this one a second chance. If you want to hear me talk more about the romance in depth then to check out my May reading wrap up but very happy that I gave this book another try because it was very the next book I picked up was another romance book. I think I've read so much romance this year and I do want to read more fantasy this year than romance but it, it's just been a very rom-com type of year for me. But I read Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams who is quickly becoming one of my new favorite rom-com authors. I just love her writing style. Her books are so quick to get through. They're so fluffy and addictive and just super cute and she is known for doing a lot of non-spicy books. A lot of her books are closed door and I do enjoy that element about her books uh, because I just think it makes her books more unique and more wholesome and sweet and this one was good. I gave it four stars. Um, it is the continuation from When in Rome, so it follows some characters that we meet in When in Rome and I love the small town elements. I enjoyed the characters. Um, I will say that this one just didn't live up to When in Rome for me. The romance did not live up to When in Rome but it was still a cute book. Do I think about it? Not really. I actually haven't really thought about this book since I read it, but it's still a cute book to pass time with and I'm happy that I read it. Then I read King of Sloth by Miss Anna Huang and I love Anna Huang, okay? Like she's amazing. The Twisted series will forever be one of my favorite romance book series. I will say that when you read one Anna Huang book, 
then you may as well have read them all because all of her books are very similar, especially this series, like very, very similar books in terms of like the writing style and every guy who's the love interest is a billionaire. Like it's all very similar writing style like you're not getting anything super new with her books but I kind of like that because you kind of know what to expect and you know where you what you're getting yourself into already and so I do like that about her formula in writing style like I like how I feel like I'm saying like a lot but I love the way that I can already know what to expect from her books and her characters and this book was super fun. I gave it four stars. I've given a lot of books in this series four stars. My favorite book in this series was book number one, King of Wrath. I love that book so much uh, but this one was pretty good and it kept me intrigued. I loved Sloane so much. I remember seeing Sloane in book one and I was just so hyped for her to get her own book and she's amazing. I liked The Love and Trust. This is another book I don't really like ever think about but I had a good time with it and it was a fun time. The next book I read was Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass who we all know and love, especially if you're a big fantasy book lover, then you've likely read the Throne of Glass series or some type of book series by this author. And this is the last book in the series. And I know that a lot of people were probably expecting me to give this five stars. I expected it to be five stars as well, but it wasn't. It was four stars. And I think I'm, I think I'm, in the group of people who prefer the earlier books in the series to the later books in the series. I loved Throne of Glass, Crowd of Midnight, Era of Fire, Queen of Shadows, and then once we got to Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash, I just wasn't as heavily intrigued because a lot of war was going on, a lot of plots which I do love that in a fantasy book but it was just so much and this book was so long and it just felt like 980 pages of plotting and it just took me a little bit out of the series but I still am so happy I read it. I love Front of Glass so much. I love the characters so much and the world building is just on a whole other level of impressive and amazing and I'm very happy I read this series and it was such an epic ending to these characters that we've grown to love so much. And now I guess I have to add Crescent City to my list which I've been holding off on because because number one it's so long. I mean all of Sarah G Mass's books are fairly long but Crescent City is so long and then it's also not a bunch of people's favorite series by her. I think that people typically like Akatar and Front of Glass more than Crescent City, which makes me a little bit nervous, but I will get around to reading it soon, I promise. The next book that I read in May was a reread. It is The School for Good and Evil, and this series was my entire life when I was growing up. I read this book for the first time when I was 10 years old, and I made it my entire personality and it was just everything to me and this series is still everything to me. I love this series with all my heart so much and I was so happy to be able to reread this because I already knew going into it that it was going to be five stars and I already knew I was going to have so much fun just going back over this story and these characters. I love these characters so much and I just adore the writing style and the humor in these books, the romance, like it's so much fun, so fun. And so I'm very happy that I got to reread it. Moving on to all the other books I read in May, I read Assistant to the Villain and I gave this one a four and a half out of five. And it was so good. It was so cute and so different for a romanticy book because it's kind of like a comedy as well. There's a lot of jokes and humor to it. And I just 
loved the grumpy sunshine dynamic in this book between our main character Evie and the villain. I think the dynamic between them was just so wholesome and it was just done so well and it was just a really cute read. It wasn't life-changing but I had so much fun with this which is why I rated it so highly. The next book I picked up was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I love this book so much. It is one of my favorite thriller books I've read in my entire life and I gave it five stars. The plot twist was just insane. It was something I never would have guessed in a million years and I love his writing style. The way that he slowly builds up to this big suspenseful plot twist was just amazing. And something that I appreciated about his writing style as well is that his main character Casey didn't feel like a basic like filler character in this big plot. She was fully developed and fully fleshed out and I cared about her character so much and I think she was just an amazing lead character in this book and it was just amazing and if you have not read this then I just highly recommend it. It is so so good. The next book that I picked up was Guild by Raven Kennedy. It is hard for me to not smile while I talk about this book because it was just everything to me. I gave it six stars, my very first six star read of the year, which I didn't think was going to happen because this year has not been amazing in terms of me finding books that are five or six stars. So I did not expect to love this book as much as I did. And I know a lot of other people probably won't obsess about this book the way that I do. But to me, it was just, it was perfect. It was so just captivating. The main character is so lovable and I just adored the writing style. I loved the pacing of the story. I think the plot was super, super unique and I just had a blast with this book. I don't want to talk too much about the plot because I think it's good if you just go in not knowing too much about what's going to happen, but the entire series is just so much fun. I'm currently on book four, but the first three books in this series, spoiler alert, are all amazing. The next book I read in May was Zodiac Academy. This is book one in a very long series, so I was super nervous going into this, especially since it's a bully romance, which I've never read before. And I just want to say, bully romance is so different than enemies to lovers. I mean, I feel like with enemies to lovers, there's still at least some respect between the characters. But with bully romance, it's just so extreme, especially in this book. And, you know, it was super duper fun. I gave it four and a half stars. And this isn't like the most complex or special fantasy book ever. But it's urban fantasy. It's very easy to understand with the world building. And the writing style is just super easy and breezy and quick. And I really enjoyed the main characters. I think Tori and Darcy were written so well and they were just both so likable. I know some people find them annoying, but I didn't find them annoying at all. I really enjoyed both of their POVs and I'm so excited to continue with this series. I'm hoping to start book two sometime in August, but um, this was a super fun book and I do recommend this book, especially if you like urban fantasies. The next book I read was Serpent and Dove and this is book one in a trilogy and it was so good. I gave it 4.75 stars. This is one of the best fantasy enemies to lovers books I've read in my entire life. The dynamic of the relationship and the pacing of the slow burn was done incredibly well. I loved the writing style. I loved the plot. I loved the trope of a witch and witch hunter. I think that made it, it this book have such high stakes for the plot and the romance. I will say that the only thing holding this book back from being a five star is because I just didn't love that real religion was being talked about in this book. And I think in fantasy books, I think it's more respectful, especially if you're doing these types of tropes, to maybe have like a 
fantasy religion system in place instead of using a real one so that's the only reason why this didn't get five stars from me but it was a really fun fantasy book and I loved the romance and I will definitely be continuing with this series very soon maybe in October. The last book that I read in May was Scythe or Scythe. Scythe, I think is how you say it. I'm horrible at pronouncing things. We know this. But I read Scythe and this was such a fun dystopian YA rivals to lovers book. I gave it five stars. The writing style was just so unique and impactful and I was highlighting so much uh, in this book while I was reading it on my Kindle and I just loved the characters. I loved all of the character development. The plot was just written so well and this is one of the most unique dystopian books I've ever read and I can't wait to continue with this trilogy. It was so good. I loved the romance as well. It was so, so wholesome and adorable, and I loved the characters. But this was such a good book, and I totally recommend it, especially if you're looking for dystopian books to add to your TBR. Next, we're moving on to all the books I read in June. So the first book that I read in June was Glint by Raven Kennedy. This is book two in the Plated Prisoner series. And again, it was just a masterpiece. It was amazing. It was perfection. I ate this book up. I loved it so much. And I gave it six stars. It's just an uh, amazing continuation from the events that happen at the end of Guild. And we are introduced to a new character in this book, and I love him very much. And this book was just absolutely amazing, and everyone needs to go and read this series if you're over the age of 18. Then I picked up an adorable YA rom-com, I Hope This Doesn't Find You by Anne Liang. And this is my first time ever reading one of her books. And I loved this book so much. I had kept seeing it on Goodreads and I decided I wanted to read it because everyone on Goodreads was just raving about this book and loving it and rating it super highly. And I just had the best time ever with this book. It is one of my favorite YA rom-coms ever. And such a strong five-star read for me. I loved every single second of this book. We have enemies to lovers. We have rivals to lovers. We've got some forced proximity. And it's kind of like in this uh, academia setting as well, which I absolutely loved. I adored the main character. I loved the love interest. This book is just so wholesome and fluffy and adorable and if you love YA romance or just romance in general then you need to read this book. It's so good. The next book I picked up was Hate Mail, another rom-com, an adult rom-com and this is by Donna Marchetti and this is her debut book and for a debut book this was absolutely amazing. She already has such a good strong writing style and her writing style is very fun and witty and clever and it's just very very perfect for the rom-com genre and I gave this a very strong four stars and I'm very excited to read more by this offer in the future and this was a pretty fun book and very funny as well and I really liked both of the characters. I wasn't obsessed with the romance like I don't think about them every single day or anything like that but it was a very fun book to read and I do totally recommend this. Then I entered my thriller era and I decided to binge read some books by Frida McFadden who's one of my favorite thriller authors of all time because her books are just they're easy to get through like her thriller books aren't like masterpieces compared to some other thriller authors like Riley Sager but still her books are just so quick and easy and fun to binge read and so I love her books so I read Want to Know a Secret and this was a pretty fun book. I gave this four and a half stars because I just really liked the premise of the story with this neighborhood that has all of these different secrets and the main character is a YouTuber with a baking channel and she's got a lot of secrets and I just really enjoyed the setup of the book even though I totally guessed the big plot twist. I guessed the big plot twist when I was like 
40% into the book, but I still wasn't upset that I was right. I like being right sometimes in thrillers, so that was fun. But I would recommend this if you just want a super quick book to binge read or get you out of a reading slump. And then I read The Inmate and I gave this one four stars. It's probably my least favorite Frida McFadden book, one of my least favorite Frida McFadden books, but um, it was still a fun time. It was still very bingeable and exciting. The only thing I didn't like about that book was that a lot of the dialogue and um, narration in the book felt very basic and just very similar to other books that I've read by her, but it was still a super fun time, so I do recommend both of these thriller books. Then I read King of Battle and Blood, and this was one of the most disappointing books that I've read this year because I had such high expectations. Going into this, I was positive that it was going to be five stars or 4.75 stars. I was positive because of the tropes. We've got vampires, which I'm not a huge vampire girl, but still, we've got vampires. We have enemies to lovers. We have arranged marriage. Like... Those are some of my favorite tropes ever, especially enemies to lovers combined with arranged marriage is like my favorite combination ever. So I was very excited to read this book. It, it had been on my TBR for so long. And I honestly think that Free Stars is a little too generous of a rating for this book. I totally think I could lower it to 2.5 because or maybe even two stars because I'm never gonna give this book the time of day ever again after I talk about it but I gave it three stars initially because of the tropes that were in this book that I really do like those tropes but the romance was so bad it wasn't even a romance it was just there was no love it was just lust it was just lust they were being spicy with each other in like every single chapter which you know, I'm fine with spice. I am. But I need there to be a good emotional balance and a good emotional connection in the relationship. And there was none of that. They would fight and they would be spicy with each other and then have another fight and then start making out. Like it was just so repetitive and just there was no growth or build up to their romance. There were no sweet tender moments between them at all and I just really hated the FMC I hated her I think she was just so annoying so argumentative for no reason at all she was just very irritating the guy was fine he didn't irritate me but he wasn't anything special either um this book was just very bland but I feel like it had so much potential to be something amazing so yeah, I know that I'm saying free stars and I'm going to keep my rating as free stars on Goodreads, but um, I could probably lower it to two stars. We'll see. I might eventually lower it to two stars, but I cannot recommend this book to you. I will only recommend it if you love vampires and you love these tropes and you just really want to see if you like this book, but otherwise I cannot recommend it to you. The next book I read was The Duff, and fun fact, the movie is like my favorite thing ever. I love the movie so much, and the movie and the book are insanely different. The book is definitely more mature. The um, movie is PG-13, so there, there are those differences, but I love both versions of this story, whether it's in the book or the movie. I do prefer the movie, but I did watch the movie first, so I might be a little bit biased, but the book is still so fun, and it just has a lot more depth uh, about the main character and tackles some slightly different subject matters as well. And I really just enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars. It's not the best five star read that I've ever had in my life, but I just love the this character. I love the main character Bianca so much and I love the story and it was just a super fun book to read so I totally do recommend this and even if you don't want to read the book then I definitely recommend the movie because the movie is 
absolutely amazing. If you love Better Than the Movies, then you will love the Duff movie because there are some similarities there and it's so good, so good. Then I picked up Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. This is the sequel to Daughter of the Pirate King, which I really loved. I always have a good time with Trisha Levenseller's books because she loves to write really unique books with a lot of morally gray main characters, which I love so much. This was a really fun sequel. It was not as good as the first book, in my opinion, maybe because the first book had so much build up to the actual main relationship. And this book felt like a lot of back and forth between the main character and her love interest, which I didn't love because it was just basically 300 pages of them you know, having to wait for them to admit that they are in love, which we already know. So I didn't love that. The plot was really good, though. There were some tedious areas in this book, but it was still super good. And I totally recommend this series or any book by Trisha Levenseller. She's a great author. Then I picked up A World Without Princes, which is book two in the School for Good and Evil series. And I had so much fun with this book. I gave it five stars. Obviously, this series is just everything to me. And it was a lot funnier than what I remember from reading it the first time. Like, there were some very clever jokes in this one, which I really loved. And I love the different uh, theme in this book as well with girls against boys, which is just always so fun to read about. I'm team Sophie till the day I die. I love Sophie so much. And again, this series is just incredible. So even if you're an adult, I think you still need to give this book a chance. It's like Harry Potter. We're never too old for Harry Potter. And you, you can never be too old for this series. It's so, so much fun. Then I picked up another disappointing book in the month of June. I read Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. And I have seen so much people say this is a book that you will either love or hate. And I I don't want to say I'm in between because I definitely did not love this book, but I appreciated the writing style. I think the writing style was so beautiful and there were so many like lovely flowery descriptive sentences in this book that I was highlighting and that I really enjoyed. But I will say I'm very happy that this is fiction because I do not think that a relationship like this should be highlighted. It's basically like Blair and Chuck from Gossip Girl. And maybe I'm going to be sounding weird when I say this, but I really enjoyed Blair and Chuck on Gossip Girl. They made Gossip Girl interesting, you know, um, but... I think we can all agree that Blair and Chuck were insanely toxic, so toxic, and BJ and Magnolia's relationship is incredibly toxic, and I liked Magnolia. I didn't love everything that she was doing, and I think she should have moved on, but at the same time, I just hated BJ so much, and I know that there's so much people out there who love him, and I know that there are probably a lot of reasons for why he is the way he is and why he did what he did, but I just hated him. I hated being in his POV. I hated the way that he talked about women. I hated the way that he treated Magnolia. I think he was just awful. Like, I just couldn't stand him, um, but I gave this three stars. I don't know if I'm going to continue with this series. I quite liked Daisy Hates, even though she made some very small appearances. But I know some people like the Daisy Hates books more than Magnolia Parks. So I might give Daisy Hates a try. But this book was not it for me. I didn't understand the hype of it at all. But I'm happy that I finally got to read it to see if I would like it or not. And unfortunately, I did not. The next book I read was, sorry, not even the next book. The last book that I read in June was Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh, which is another super, super hyped book. 
on Bookstagram, on BookTok, on BookTube, especially BookTube, because I know that uh, Larissa Reads and that Destiny Sidwell absolutely love the Boys of Toman series so much. And Alexa Ray also really loves it now. So I had to jump on board and see if I would enjoy it as well. And I really enjoyed this book. I gave it 4.25. But to be completely honest with you, I feel like I should up this rating to four and a half stars because I think about Johnny and Shannon like at least three times a week since I read this book. Like I do think about them a lot and I do want to continue with this series. I absolutely will continue with this series, just not anytime super soon because these books are so long. They are super, super long. Um, which, you know, if these books were a little bit shorter, I probably would have given this five stars or 4.75 stars. But at the end of the day, I just had a really good time with this book. It was very emotional, so much more emotional than what I was even expecting, because I knew going into it, people were saying, oh, look and check the content warnings so you know what you're getting yourself into. And I was still so surprised by how sad and emotional this book was. The romance between Shani and Jonan is just such a sweet, wholesome, slow burn. And it was just so beautiful to read about. And I really enjoyed the side characters in this book as well. And it was just a really, really great coming of age book. I know that there is some discussion as to whether or not this should be classified as YA or adult because it follows characters who are 15 and 17 but the language in this book is very mature especially when it's in the boys POV. Um, so I would say that it's upper YA. I would say like 17 and 18 year olds can read it but I would not recommend this to like a 14 year old or 15 year old to read because it does deal with a lot of mature topics it's not spicy at least book one wasn't not spicy but it does have mature topics so you should take that into consideration but it was a very good book and I really really had a good time with it I love you guys so much to the moon and back and thank you for watching this video. I will be getting my July reading wrap up a video out very soon. I read some super fun books in July so I can't wait to talk about those with you and let me know some of your favorite books that you've read so far this year, some of your least favorite books as well and please make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe and I just love you all so much. I also have a very fun 24 hour readathon video which is currently being edited so I'm very excited to upload that video soon and I just love you all so much and I hope you have the best day ever and happy reading to you and I'll see you in another video very soon.